June 12, 2018 to order. And I'm going to ask the clerk for roll call. Mayor Weissman. Here. Vice Mayor Mizrahi. Here. Commissioner Landman. Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks. Here. Commissioner Narosky. Here. Commissioner Weinberg. Here. Commissioner Shelley. Here. Mrs. Grant. Here. Mr. Wolpin. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Can we all rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'm going to ask the city manager if there's any deletions or additions to the agenda. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, the staff is requesting that we um, remove item 5F from the agenda and reschedule it at a future meeting. Thank you so much. Mayor? Yes, sir. If I may also in that connection, if necessary, we're hereby requesting a further attorney-client session on the Waipoa v. City of Aventura case and will be scheduled that in the future if need be. Thank you so much. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the special presentations and the city manager will do this. Thank you, and on accepting on behalf of Sergeant Jaime Chalam is our chief, Brian Pegues, for 15 or for 10 years of service, and then accepting also for 15 years for Melanda Daniels, and thanks, chief. Thank you so much. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the consent and I'm going to ask if any member of the commission would like to remove an item from the consent agenda. All right, can I have a motion of approval of the items A through E and not F, because F has already been removed. Motion. Com mo motion made by Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. Can I have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Mizrahi. I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. And because the item F was uh, withdrawn for a time in the future, we're going right to our zoning hearings, which are quasi judicial public hearings. Um, we have none. We have also item number seven on ordinance. We do not have a first reading of any ordinance. We do have a second reading. So I'm going to ask the city attorney to please read the ordinance. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending section 31143, residential zoning districts of the city's land development regulations by amending section 31143 F3B, multifamily high density residential RMF4, district to add public or private waterways and docks to the sun shadow exemption, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Um, Mr. Walpin, were you going to announce the Community Development Director staff report? Yes, thank you, Mayor. The Community Development, uh, D Development Director staff report, as filed in the record on first reading, is incorporated to the record along with comments that were made on first reading when this matter was previously heard by the uh, local planning agency and the city commission. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance made by Commissioner Shelley? Can I have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Landman. I'm going to ask the applicant if they have any comments.
commissioners, uh, yes, I, I do have comments only because I know that there is an objector in the audience, and I do want, do want to put our remarks on the record. Uh, my name is Jeff Burkow, and I'm an attorney with the law firm of Burkow, Riddell, Fernandez, and Larkin, 200 South Biscayne Boulevard. We are representing the applicant on this YCM acquisition LLC, and we've proposed a code amendment intended to clarify what we think is an overly broad city code provision. Uh, this is a code amendment, and it's not a site-specific zoning request. Um, in the RMF4 district, as you know, there's a shadow study requirement, and that's the high-density residential district. For buildings over 100 feet in height, uh, the building must be designed so it does not cast a shadow on anybody else's property um, at the worst-case scenario, which is December 21st at noon. That's meant to protect a neighbor's enjoyment of their building, their outside areas, their pools, their pool decks, their balconies, etc. There's one exception to that requirement, which is when a shadow is cast on public road rights-of-way, uh, that does not require a variance or any special approval. So a building can cast a shadow on a sidewalk or on a street, but not on an adjacent building. Uh, there's no exception, however, for public or private waterways and docks that extend into those waterways. Uh, the upland areas with buildings, terraces, pools, etc., the areas owned and enjoyed by residents would still be protected under the code provision that we are proposing. Um, can I show this on the uh, screen? Okay. Can somebody assist with the equipment? These are two theoretical buildings that could be built on our peninsula area on Turnberry Isle. And um, as you could see, the, uh, the shadows cast from these conceptual buildings would extend into private waterway areas beyond the red line. But as designed, or as shown on this, again, conceptual plan, they would not cast a shadow on any of the upland areas. This is a particularly difficult area to design for uh, because it is a peninsula. Um, the code uh, creates that problem, so we uh, were proposing this amendment. Even though the zoning allows a maximum height of 250 feet at this area, uh, Turnberry, as the owner, would be limited to approximately 100 feet in height because of this shadow requirement, because if they could not build into the waterway, the shadow would have to stop at the red line. Again, as proposed, the shadow will not be cast on anyone's building, pool deck, balcony, or terrace, or anything that sits on the land, only the waterways and the docks that extend into the waterways. And as you know, just east of this property, the, uh, the north tower already extends a shadow into the waterway, as you can see from this diagram. And that hasn't, cost, that hasn't caused any sort of problem in the past. So what we're proposing is to add, after the exception language in the code today, except for public road rights-of-way, we're proposing to add uh, public or private waterways and docks. We think we think that this makes sense uh, because there's no negative impact when a shadow is cast on a roadway or a sidewalk, and there should be no adverse impact when the shadow is cast on navigable rights of way used by boats. Um, as you requested and as we committed at the workshop, we did send notice to each of the townhome owners who own docks that extend into the water at Porta Vida. Prior to first reading, we put copies of those into the record at first reading. We have not heard anything since from any of those owners. Those copies are in the record. We would request that you approve the ordinance this evening. We'd like to reserve some time for rebuttal, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burkow. I'm going to ask if any member of the commission has any questions or comments at this time. Commissioner Shelley. 
Yeah, Mr. Burke, I just I want to clarify something that you said. I want to make sure this does not affect any of the buildings around you. This is a shadow issue only. Is that correct? That's correct. It does so, not affect any building. So in terms of the approval process, you already have the approval to put the density on that location. You just need the variance to make sure the shadow doesn't apply to any other residents. Is that correct? We need the code amendment. A code yes. amendment, yes. But it's yes. for the purposes of the shadow, not zoning or density. That's correct. Thank you. Um, I have one question. Should this, or, should this code change be enacted? Joanne, how many potential properties can this affect in the city? Um, thank you, Mayor. The, the application of this code amendment is, is quite restrictive. Uh, limited in our city and uh, when I we took a look at it on uh, for first reading um, perhaps uh, Northeast 213th Street Canal and again it would only be if, if existing developments were redeveloped higher than they are now that the, that the shadow would actually fall on the on the water um, Mystic Point, again, if, if the condominiums were redeveloped and they were, again, higher than they are now, it would cast more of a shadow than they do now. Uh, Williams Island Marina, again, if, if townhomes and condos are redeveloped, that, that area is, again, all, all developed now. That, that's the very limited application of this code amendment. So am I right in saying that at the present time, there's no other property being affected? That's correct. And in all of those cases you cited, we're talking about water, where a, a dock where a boat may be. That's correct. Water. Not property. Not property. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to open this up for public comment, and I'm going to request that members of the public state their name and address for the record. Do we have anyone that wants to speak? Please. Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Silverstein, and I'm here with regards to this particular amendment that is being sought to, to this um, particular ordinance. I've had the opportunity, and I want to thank everybody on this commission, as well as Mr. Burkow, for, uh, his open, for their open conversations back and forth with regards to this issue, because in my opinion, this is not just a simple issue about a shadow. Because what that seems to conceal or cloak is the shadow will be created by towers. In other words, yes, there may be a shadow that's cast over the docks and over the marinas and over the waters. But let's not forget what's going to cast, what's going to cause and cast those shadows. And we're talking about towers in excess of 20 stories tall. Now, I had the opportunity, thanks to Mrs. Grant, to review the notices that were sent to the eight uh, dock owners over at Porta Vita, because it's my understanding, and I just now had the opportunity, just like everyone else, to see the preliminary drawing. And my understanding is that the two towers, 20 stories plus, will be on the peninsula where the old hotel at the Turnberry Isle condominium used to be in that area right there. Specifically, the notice, nor the exception, fully and or truthfully informs the persons immediately affected that passing the amendment will allow the erection subject to certain pre-existing exceptions being satisfied, such as use restrictions. And it's my understanding right now that there is a use restriction for that particular peninsula and the building there to be only used for commercial purposes. And that's something that needs to be clarified as well, I think, before this, this motion and this amendment goes forward. And initially plan, uh, is proposed for plans for the eventual construction of a 20-story, or in this particular case, two 20-story resident towers, directly in the backyards of the people who own the, home, the townhomes at Porta Vita, the South Tower at Porta Vita, and Turnberry Isle condominiums. Disclosure here, I live in Turnberry Isle. The matter of only speaking about the shadow, ladies and gentlemen, 
clearly and appears intentionally to ignore, disguise, or cloak the fact that this exception will permit these towers to spring up literally in these Aventura homeowners' backyards, clearly adversely and negatively affecting the Aventura residents of the affected locations. No one, or at least I don't want, a 20-story tower or two 20-story plus towers in my backyard or in their backyard or front yard, shadow or not. It's intrusive and contrary to the present ex to the present existence of um, Sir, your time's up. I will let you conclude. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that I was subject to time here. Yes. Okay. The point is that if this amendment to the ordinance get passed, shadow or not, the towers, the towers will be erected and constructed and they will adversely affect uh, the, the existing homeowners in the particular area. And for those reasons, I'd ask that the fact that the shadow may not be cast on the homes, but the fact that the towers will be there in their backyards and front yards, that the ordinance not be amended. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does staff want to add anything in terms of the use restrictions? Before anything is built, of course, the applicant will be required to apply for site plan approval. And as part of that approval, a title opinion and all special exception documents are provided to the city for review um, by staff and the city attorney. Um, I, I'm not aware of any use restrictions, but if there were, that would be disclosed in the opinion of title. And I'll ask Mr. Burkow if he wants to make any other further comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne, and uh, my partner Mickey and I had a chance to speak with Mr. Silverstein yesterday, uh, and we told him that this change only affects the docks and waterways, doesn't affect the buildings, the terraces, the upland areas, et cetera. Any towers, as he refers to them, will be built subject to the code and will comply with code requirements. We'll have to go through site plan approval and I don't believe that anything that obtains site plan approval in Aventura will have a negative impact on the citizens of, of Aventura. Um, we also heard for the first time from him about this restriction of a, to a commercial use on the ho former hotel site of the peninsula. Um, I asked Mr. Silverstein if he would provide us with a copy of the condominium declaration page that has that restriction. Uh, he said that he had seen it and he would try to find it for us. I still don't have that. We inquired of our clients, uh, condominium attorneys, and, and as you imagine, um, they've done quite a number of condo docs for Turnberry. Uh, they told us the following, that as far as they're concerned, there is no such restriction the North Tower Declaration of Condominium does not govern this parcel. The North Tower documents only govern the North Tower property submitted as part of the North Tower Condominium. There are other easement agreements and use agreements attached to the North Tower Declaration with respect to the rest of Turnberry Isle, but those documents don't contain any restriction of what can be built on the YCM the YCM parcels, this particular parcel, uh, and a declaration of condominium for the North Tower would not be the appropriate place to record a restriction on the development of another separate piece of property, such as this property. And if such a restriction existed, it would be recorded against this property, and we have reviewed the title to this property, and there is no such restriction. Thank you. Thanks. Again, I'm going to ask the Commission if they have any questions or comments. Commissioner Narotsky. For Just for Mr. Silverstein, um, just so I'm clear in terms of the objection, it seems as though um, it would be to the fact that this that allowing this would just be a pretext for the construction of more development, which would just be added congestion and, and right in your backyard. Is that the objection? Correct. Yes, pretty much. Okay. Because what's the purpose of a shadow extension um, except to prevent the building from being built and cast that shadow? Okay. Thank you. 
Any other commissioner? Okay. Anyone else from the public? Then I'm going to close this item for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes on second and final reading. Thank you. Thank you. I am now going to ask the city attorney to read Ordinance B. Thank you, Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending Chapter 36, Retirement, Article 2, Police Pension Plan and Trust Fund, by amending Section 3637, Time of Hire, to provide rules allowing officers hired between October 1, 2000 and September 30, 2003, to purchase credited service under the City of Aventura Police Officers Retirement Plan for the years of service that they render to the city as police officers prior to the effective date of the retirement plan, providing for repeal, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I please have a motion for approval of this ordinance? Moved by Commissioner Weinberg, seconded by Commissioner Landman. I'm going to ask the city manager to review this item. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, as David said when he was reading the item, this allows officers to buy back prior service credit, um, and it is at no cost to the city. So the total cost of, of picking up the past service credit is on the responsibility of the officer. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask if any member of the commission has any questions or comments. All right, since our police chief is here, uh, are you in favor of this? Thank you so much, sir. I'm going to open it for public comment. Is there anyone that would like to address this item? Seeing as there are none, I'm going to close it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes on second and final reading. Thank you. Our next item of business, number nine, resolutions. I'm going to ask the city attorney to read the resolution. Thank you, Mayor. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, joining the Seawall Coalition, providing for implementation, providing for transmittal, and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion for approval of this resolution? Made by Commissioner Narotsky and seconded by Commissioner Shelley. Um, I'm going to ask Jim Kaysen to provide a presentation on behalf of the Seawall Coalition. Thank you very much for inviting me here. I just got back from uh, a couple of days ago from Croatia and Slovenia, so this is my first uh, public, <laughs> public appearance since that time. I was uh, mayor of Coral Gables from 2011 to 2017, and uh, I moved to um, Coral Gables from Paraguay, which does not have a problem with sea level rise, but I realized that our city was um, a, a great number of our buildings and over three and a half billion dollars worth of our property was under four feet. So I became very concerned with sea level rise and uh, eventually got in touch with a group called the First Street Foundation, which is a group of um, three or four very wealthy um, entrepreneurs who sold their businesses and put all their money into a public education campaign to um, uh, educate people about the realities of sea level rise. They don't get into the debate on climate change, but just the facts that the seas are rising for whatever reason and, and municipalities have to prepare for that. Um, so the first city to join the Seawall co Coalition was Coral Gables, and I've been helping the, um, the, 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 the uh, Seawall group uh, in the last couple months getting cities on board. Um, we're nonpartisan, we're nonpolitical, we're an NGO, we're a 501c4. We were very much involved with um, Miami's bond issue. They, uh, about a month before the, the vote was to take place, they had done no public um, outreach. Of course, they can't. But uh, our, our Seawall Coalition was able to put about $400,000 in to educate the public, both in Spanish and English, with a tremendous campaign that turned it around from a probable no to a 57% approval of the um, of the bond. So Miami has money now available for preparing for sea level rise, whichever they would like. 
we're called a seawall coalition, but we're not necessarily in favor of seawalls. That's just the, the phrase we use to try to indicate that we're concerned with um, coastal flooding and hurricanes and more intense hurricanes, sea level rise. Um, we've uh, got, so far we have about 80, 80 organizations on board, and uh, in Florida we have um, four, so far 14 cities: Coral Gables, St. Petersburg, St. Augustine, Fort Lauderdale, Surfside, Pompano Beach, Sunny Isles Beach, South Miami, Delray Beach, Cutler Bay, Port Orange, Key Biscayne, Boca Raton, and Hillsboro Beach. So we're very happy to. Uh, to invite uh, Aventura to join us. Uh, what we're doing is we have teams in New York and in Washington. We're working on Congress to get them to be look at this as a national problem, not just one for Florida. It's not a hurricane problem. It's a it's a it's a problem for all of our country, and even even cities and places like in Kansas need to be aware. If we lose our ports and our military bases to sea level rise, they're not going to their economy is going to be hurt. So it's very simple, the mission. Try to educate Washington, which has not paid much attention to this, to get them to change policies, to make incentives available for um, communities to, to um, be able to invest in infrastructure improvements and to get a greater public awareness. So we're open to uh, suggestions on how we can, can help. We have a lot of funds. Um, so if Aventura decides to join us, let us know how we can help, and we'll be happy to. Thank you so much. Just make sure I heard you right. You have a lot of funds. Yes, that's one of the, that's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the nice things about this because, um, in fact, they, they, they put several hundred million dollars of their own money into this education campaign. So we're right, right now, um, the idea is to get cities from Massachusetts through California on board. They say we have... Charleston, South Carolina just joined. We're working in, in Louisiana now, California, Texas. So in the end, we hope to have one or 200 uh, cities. We have military groups. We have chambers of commerce. And if we can go to Washington and say, look at all these coastal cities that demand that you pay attention to our problems and provide incentives, help us rebuild better, not like FEMA, now you have to build what was destroyed. We want to be able to build better. So we think that... Um, this, the campaign, which is the only one that I know of, will be very helpful to all of our communities and enable us to prepare for the, um, the coastal problems that are coming. Does any member of the commission have any questions for Mr. Kaysen? Commissioner Narotsky. Just a quick question. Um, it's my understanding that all of the Florida congressional delegation is pretty much on board with at least this. Is that not correct? Uh, well, we have... Um, uh, Representative Corbello is on board, and we're, I, I think uh, Ileana Ross Layton is on board. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a question of trying to get people's attention to what we're doing. So, we have quite a few um, in, in Virginia because Norfolk a Naval Base, for example, is really imperiled. And so, we have military groups there, quite a few congressmen, and uh, others from, from Virginia that are on board. And I think in the next couple months, the way it's, it's going, we'll have a, a large group of uh, congressional delegates behind us as well. Is there anything that, that we can do, uh, I mean, aside from joining? Uh, what can we take to be, because, and, and the reason I brought this up at the uh, the workshop is just there's, obviously I know that, I, I speak for myself, but I would imagine that everybody is concerned, um, at least, about trying to get a, a unified uh, voice. So are there things that we can do to be proactive, and whether that's contacting elected officials, I mean, education? Yeah, one of the things that I think is important is our, our Hispanic community has re receives almost no information on sea level rise and the coming problems. All of the materials that we have available are, are in Spanish as well. I recommend you look at something called sealevelrise.org and Flood IQ. I had some slides showing the likelihood of um, flooding here in Aventura in 2032 from hurricanes, and I decided not to, 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 to go into that. But take a look yourself on flood IQ. But I think it's important to have public discussions, particularly with schools, younger people, about that they're going to live to 90 years old. They're going to be around in 2100, and the water's going to be up to here. So they need to be aware of what, what people are doing. Get behind us. Um, 
the other thing is get, get, get the other cities that are nearby uh, to join. We hope that uh, we'll get Hollywood shortly, uh, North Miami, and um, uh, some of the other cities are working on Pinecrest and Key West and Miami and, Mi and Miami Beach are in the process of joining. But let us know how we can help you. And take a look at our web page. It's, it's constantly updated. The people behind it were in, in charge of the um, Weather Channel before. So there's a lot of high-powered people, a lot of money, a lot of expertise, technical expertise. And we think that uh, right now, once we get the coalition up and running, um, we're looking for your ideas and how we can help you. If you, have a, if you decide to do a bond campaign, they were very successful in that. Uh, anything that, that we can do, they're willing to entertain. Any other commissioner have any other comments or questions? Okay, I'm going to open it up for public comment. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to address this? Seeing as there are none, I'm going to close it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for roll call vote. Commissioner Landman? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Commissioner Weinberg? Yes. Vice Mayor Mizrahi? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes, and I'm so happy you reached out to us. And the next item is reports. Do any commissioners have any reports? Okay, well, I guess I have, a, I want to say we had a fabulous kindergarten graduation at ACES, and it was matched by the eighth grade graduation. Both spectacular events, wonderful teachers. We also, the city did a teacher appreciation where teachers at ACES that have served five years those that have served 10 years and those that have served 15 years were all recognized by the city. The following day or day after, on the request of Dr. Marks, the commission provided breakfast for those teachers. So that kind of brings us up to date and school's over now. So we will, we will get, continue to get more involved with next year. Commissioner Shelley. I think the most important thing so far is that today we had a groundbreaking for the high school. And uh, let's not overlook the fact that this time next year we'll be looking to get ready to open for the 2019 school year of the new high school for Aventura. And today was a very exciting, phenomenal day because it was the first day where we can start looking forward to our kids going to school from early age right through to the graduation of high school and then off to college and staying right here in our city. And all of it is for free, sponsored by the Board of Education and subsidized by our city. So. To me, that was a wonderful opportunity today, and we're all thrilled for it. Great to announce it. And many of the people that are here were at the ceremony, and we thank you again. Anyone else? Okay, then um, I'm going to open it for public comments. Does anyone in the public have anything they want to address to the commission? Okay, I'm going to close that, and I'm going to ask for a motion for adjournment made by Doc, Commissioner Dr. Marks. Can I? What? Yes, sir. I would like to uh, make a comment on a new subject, if I may. Of course, it's, it was open. Please come up and state your name and address. Still on, the, on the flooding subject. My name is uh, Joel Allerhand. I'm a board director at uh, Hamptons West on Country Club Drive, and it's come, we, we're in the midst of a, uh, I'll call it from my own perspective, a massive restoration of our building uh, just about to get underway. And it's going to be, uh, start with the exterior, go through the garage and, and every other aspect, the pool, um, individual balconies. Uh, it's come to our attention that there is a program called Why Green? I don't know whether any of you are familiar with it. It's spelled, it's energy spelled backwards, Y G R E N E. And the uh, program is an energy related construction financing program that might enable some of our residents and residents, obviously, of other buildings uh, to finance part of this kind of construction. For example, we're doing, uh, many of us will be doing sliding glass doors and windows, uh, putting in hurricane code windows, which. Uh, me from my own unit is going to cost upwards of forty-five, fifty thousand dollars, and that on top of a giant assessment. 
uh, our roof might be eligible because it got blown, mostly blown away by Irma and it's sort of tempted in. Uh, I just wonder if the city would consider speaking to representatives of Y Green and pro possibly come up with uh, something that would take Aventura out of what seems to be a real minority of cities in Miami-Dade. Uh, according to the company, it's only Aventura and West Miami of most of, if not all the cities in Dade, that don't uh, participate in the program. Um, sir, I'd like to, and I think it was probably your letter to us, I'd like to tell you that it is on our next workshop agenda. Fantastic. And I would welcome you to come because the commission will be apprised of all the details of that program, which looks very promising. When, when is the workshop? Thursday. Thursday at 10, 21st, 10 a.m. Uh -oh. uh, I'll send a representative. Thank I'll you be, so much. Connecticut, but thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Yay, Connecticut. <laughs> Anyone else Born wish to? Born and uh, raised. Anyone else? Marge, come on up and state. No, you're just waving to Howard. Okay. <laughs> Can I hear it for New York? <laughs> okay. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? May I have it. Okay. We just heard, we heard from that fine gentleman from Hamptons West. This meeting is officially adjourned. <laughs>